we told you earlier that we'll be speaking to an economic historian uh, to, to look at the you know, COVID-19 economic cost vis-a-vis uh, -vis long, short, and medium-term goals. And uh, we've been joined on the phone by Nana Mensa, who is an economic historian. Good morning, sir. Good morning. Right. So, I mean, when it comes to Ghana, uh, well, I, I'm sure that this has had a heavy impact on uh, every country globally. When it comes to Ghana, the concern really is that we had budgeted for infrastructure uh, with particular interest on rules this year. But we are having to channel funds into other sectors. And today, uh, I mean, now our priority is COVID-19, how to contain and fight the virus. Tell us what this economic cost is. Thank you for having me and greetings to your dear viewers. We all know that humanity from time to time has had to confront such unpleasant circumstances and COVID-19 is one of such. The immediate effect, as we have seen, is that it dislocates the entire economy, mm -hmm. both in terms of labor, in terms of fiscal, in terms of the economic activities, and generally, also have an, an, a toll on the national cake. Um, what it means is that definitely jobs are going to be lost. There's going to be a huge uh, burden on corporate Ghana. They can't pay their taxes. Indeed, income levels would also shrink. And the government has had to fall on contingency fund. Mm -hmm. Actually, let me say that COVID-19, like many other disasters is catastrophic when it comes to economic terms. And obviously, as we've seen, the government has had to go looking for money, borrowing to uh, meet the contingencies as it has come. Yeah. Mm. All right, so, in, so mm. go ahead. Yeah, so in, the, so, so in the immediate term, what we're going to say is that the government projection for taxes, income, etc., are going to fall def, uh, so deep then again, we're going to see that in terms of the environment, uh, that is the business climate, investors are going to recoil. Particularly, the economy is in a sleeping mood or hibernation. And that is an unpleasant situation. Mm. It is unpleasant, not only for Ghana, but I mean, I mean the, the whole world. I mean, every, every country is having to you know, review their policies. Every country is having put to put to put in place measures. Yesterday we heard from the from the president and a few of the interventions he has put in place to ensure that we don't feel it so much. Now there's this argument here in Ghana and we know that we're expecting uh, the minister in parliament somewhere in July to present a new budget. There's this argument. Now we have four funds in Ghana. We have the contingency fund, we have the stabilization fund, we have uh, the heritage fund and also we have the sinking fund. Now we know that every year the petroleum revenue that comes in 70% goes into the budget, what we call the annual budget funding amount. And the 30% we have is split between the stabilization fund as well as the heritage fund. There's a concern that we may have to be touching what is in uh, the, uh, the heritage fund. What's your take on that? Uh, um, let's come back to the reality. The reality is that humanity is faced with such an event that it calls or it puts to test the resilience of the economy. Mm -hmm. Now, like it has been said, we are at war, and this time with an unknown enemy, with a disease that we can't trace its origin, mm -hmm. and we have no solution. Mm -hmm. Definitely, that's why the government has, or the president has emergency power, uh, powers to invoke the emergency powers on the use of the national resources. Mm -hmm. In my view, uh, it, 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 it also tells us that, like we've always said, we haven't changed the structure of this economy mm -hmm. ever since uh, independence, and that the external shocks that we are exposed to mm -hmm. in terms of even uh, the exports of just raw materials, non-value added raw materials poses such great challenges. But Absolutely. let me say, mm -hmm. yeah, the, let, me, let me dare say that yes, there would be short uh, falls in terms of receipt, basically due to the pricing volatility on mm -hmm. the world market. Mm -hmm and that we would recover. Now, it has exposed us. Uh, that is how resilient this economy is. That's the biggest question. Mm -hmm. And so generally, I would think that in the immediate and short-term actions to mm -hmm. mitigate the effect of COVID, mm -hmm. we would as a nation have to 
let's let me use the word for the want of a better word mm -hmm. reason reason reason, mm -hmm. reason with the authorities mm. that now, is a medium short term goal no, 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 medium that, short that term that is the immediate term that is okay. the immediate term because immediate. let me tell you everything we are doing now is relief relief it, everything we are doing now is is relief that is to try to mitigate the the, the, the consequences the or the harsh effect mm -hmm. on the hum, on humanity and so if there's money sitting down somewhere and we realize that for for one or two reasons we haven't been able to uh, create the kind of resilience or the structure this economy needs look in many economies like Norway they are not going to touch their sovereign funds or their mm -hmm. wealth fund mm -hmm. we have had to touch it because already we know this is a country that we haven't put brakes on debt on mm -hmm. borrowing it's about time parliament and acts a lot to put a, a break on mm -hmm. debt or borrowing right now or also what it means is that even the later that we have we've got to go and renegotiate our debt repayment with mm -hmm. the foreign and also with the domestic market mm -hmm. uh with the 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 the, the, the local players mm -hmm. okay the contractors mm -hmm. whoever we owe locally mm -hmm. we've got to go and renegotiate but let me just quickly uh, move to the other level yeah the long term permitted government mm -hmm. having mm -hmm. permitted government mm -hmm. to use whatever resources we have including borrowing to give us relief which is our survival in the in medium term what we need to really look at is a Marshall Plan for this mm -hmm. economy. Absolutely. Now, going back to 1945, mm -hmm. going back to 1945, Germany had a Marshall Plan. And in Japan, Japan had a Marshall Plan in 1948. That uh, positioned them. Unfortunately, what we have been doing is that we have never had this concept of taking huge facilities, mm -hmm. difficult as they are, mm -hmm and going in for an austerity measure which the country buys into for the next 50 years mm -hmm. so in my in my recommendation to the government everything we're doing is relief but then relief. In it, it should we go beyond june mm -hmm. we're going to have to really sit back and look at what the, the problems are the problems are basically fundamental yeah our, our fundamentals are weak you know their concerns i mean yesterday we heard from the president and for me it was reassuring uh, that we are going to be having uh production of face masks you know starting domestic production starting tomorrow and we are hoping that this will take off smoothly but but this has exposed us like you said so their concerns about we looking within and empowering the local producer and ensuring that we are able to produce Produce what we need in this country. One, it will strengthen the local currency as well as, you know, ensure that we are actually self-sufficient. Would you say that that should be a long-term measure? And long-term measures begin from attitudes and behaviors that we undertake or we put together today, mm -hmm. we initiate today. And that's why for me, the government needs to put together not only uh, an, a COVID health team, but we need to put together, a, a, both at the national level, a, a contingent economic team at the national level, at the regional mm -hmm. level, mm -hmm. at the district level. Mm -hmm. Now, that is what a Marshall Plan mm -hmm. is, uh, in, in a nutshell means. It means that you need to build your economic structures right from the very basis. So in my Absolutely. interest and in the interest of the ordinary guy, mm -hmm. this is still a cocoa economy. Okay, mm -hmm. This is a, an economy that it's so micro. All right. And mm -hmm. so for me, I've also said that mm -hmm. it's look, politics, politics, it's a means mm -hmm. to empowering people in decision making. Mm -hmm. But in right. global terms, mm -hmm. as, as, mm -hmm. as I've stated mm -hmm. in my book, mm -hmm. Beyond Senses, in global mm -hmm. terms, mm -hmm. diplomacy is transaction and transaction right. right down to the bottom. Look, if you want to attract foreign direct investment mm -hmm. or investment. In, 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 into your country. Mm -hmm. and now we see all the high rising sky, uh, uh, sky high rising buildings in Accra, in Kumasi. Mm -hmm. Now, if you go to the other side, what it means is that we are over concentrating investment and right. other uh, opportunities in mm -hmm. areas that, mm -hmm. like as we've seen, we don't even have, so, and as I, 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 I dare say, we don't even have a good distribution. So, so, mm -hmm. so, 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 so key is that our fundamentals are weak and we should look at strengthening the local producer. Many thanks for your time, uh, Anana Mensa. Anana Mensa is an economic historian and he was helping us understand uh, where we are as a country with regards to COVID-19 and whether or not we will be able to recover after six months. I'm hoping to speak to someone who's lost his job. Uh, he works at the Canadian Embassy. He's lost his job because of COVID-19.